Packer and Durham. It is hour two on a Friday. It's all about Georgia Tech today. 844-SAY-ACCN is the number for the program. Of course, we are streaming live on the ESPN app. You've also got us on Sirius XM Channel 371. West Durham, Mark Packer. Many thanks to Mark Deshera and Joe Hamilton, who joined us in hour number one. It is a busy hour number two. Bobby Crimmins will be on board with us here momentarily. Uh, Roddy Jones is back to give us more Irish insider information since he's all over it. And uh, the commissioner of the ACC, John Swafford, will join us at the bottom of the hour. <clears throat> uh, we're uh, awaiting the arrival of Coach Cremens here just a moment. Um, I was thinking about this last night when I knew that Bobby was going to join us, Pac. Uh, you and I are just old enough to remember when Georgia Tech came into the league with brother <laughs> Dwayne Morrison coaching the Jackets. Uh, Georgia Tech's first ACC basketball win that first year in the league was ironically against Ralph Sampson in Virginia on a Saturday afternoon at Alexander Coliseum uh, and with the sun shining through the portals onto the floor and uh, Brooks Steppy, you know, probably scoring about 30 and, uh, and the Jackets pulling the upset of Terry Holland's Virginia team, which must have been starstruck by the lights of downtown Atlanta <laughs> the night before or something. But, uh, and then when, when Bobby Crimmins arrived from Appalachian State, his first team – Remember his first year, Steppy, I think, was ineligible, or there was some deal with academics, and he had a he had a team put together that featured like Anthony Bird and Lee Goza and uh, Goza. kind of a, a cadre of guys. And the next thing you know, uh, Crimmins was kind of off and running. But while he was building that team that first year and putting them on the floor, the man was recruiting, and he goes and gets Mark Price, John Sally. That leads ultimately to Tom Hammonds. I mean, Pac, it's, it's remarkable what happened from like, I don't know, the early 80s on at Georgia Tech, long before that Final Four team got there in 1990 that went to Denver. You're right about that, Wes. And I still remember when Georgia Tech joined the league, uh, the arena was dingy and dark, and it was almost like, do these guys know we're playing in the Atlantic Coast Conference? I mean, this is a – the premier basketball <laughs> league in the world, for crying out loud. And Georgia Tech's facilities look like, man, what are we doing? Uh, but like you said, it did not yeah. take long for Bobby Kremens because he turned that into the Thriller Dome, and that place was electric. It didn't matter if it was a Tuesday night or a Saturday afternoon. It didn't matter who they were playing, man. You had to get a ticket to see the Jackets play. And our next guest makes his debut. He's one of the nicest guys on the planet and there he is, Bobby Cremens, front and center. Coach, good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, great to see you guys. I'm usually usually listening to you guys. Well, I hope you're feeling well. We Man, before, we get to, before we get to stories, I just want to make sure, I mean, given this COVID-19 and the pandemic, I hope everybody's ha- healthy and safe and doing well. Yeah, we are. We've, we've been really careful. Uh, the biggest thing we we canceled a lot of trips, but my uh, my biggest adjustment is not seeing my grandchildren. I haven't seen them since Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. They live in Philadelphia, so I'm hoping um, in the next few months that I might be able to see them. All right. Well, let's get to the other task at hand. Uh, apparently, golf is still one of the things you can do while social distancing. So, are you still sandbagging innocent people on the golf course? Oh, uh, Wes, my golf game stinks, but I am playing golf. It's been a savior for so many people down here. Uh, my club has been closed one time, but we have strict restrictions. But um, I love going out and hitting balls. I play twice a week. Um, and it's been a savior for so many people to get out and to be able to play golf and to go hit balls. It's been fantastic. Bobby, uh, we were just sitting reminiscing about when Georgia Tech joined the league and then when you took over and recruited like a madman and how the Thriller Dome used to just be an incredible place to watch games. It's loud. Teams are great and they're fun to watch. But do you remember the first time you walked in and said, you know what, I'm going to take over this program? When you looked around at the facilities and your lineup and what you had to go against, I mean, this is Dean Smith and the incredible days of ACC basketball in the you know, 80s and so forth. Well, just kind of walk us through when you walked through Georgia Tech for the first time and said, hey, this is my program, and how in the world am I going to compete with these guys? Well, I never thought about that. 
uh, all I thought about was, you know, I wanted to play in the league. Uh, I wanted to coach in the league where I played. And um, I wanted some redemption. As you well know, I lost a, a ACC final championship game that, that really, really bothered me. And I felt like uh, maybe I could get some redemption if I could win the ACC championship as a coach that um, I lost as a player. And um, so that's a, that was the most important thing to me was the league. I, I wanted the coach in the league where I played. I thought it was a great league. And I thought we could really sell the league and eventually build the program. Bobby, we talked about the first team. Uh, I know you had Anthony Bird, who was a junior college transfer. You had some guys yeah. that were left over from the previous team. So while you put a team on the floor that first year, you and your staff were doing a remarkable job kind of setting the recruiting lines out. How important was the combination of what you were doing on the floor with what you were doing in recruiting to building the program? It was very important. Our, our goals were twofold. Uh, number one, we tried to be competitive. Um, we tried to um, shorten the game. Uh, we did not have the shot clock, I believe. I, I, I don't think we had the shot clock yet. What year right. did the shot clock come in? <laughs> After the 82 ACC tournament, 82-83 was the first year of the shot clock. Right. So I coached one year, and what we tried to do was shorten the games, and we just tried to be competitive and try and steal a few games. That was number one. Actually, that was number two. Number one was recruit, recruit, recruit. Constantly on the road. Uh, my assistant, George Felton, discovered Mark Price. Of course, we went up to New York, my stomping grounds, and found a skinny kid by the name of John Sally. And then one day I got a phone call from a junior college kid, a coach, who told me he had a 6'10 guy. And I said, something's got to be wrong. And he said, well, he speaks about five languages, but English is not the best of his language. And I told him, I said, well, I'm not a very good English speaker either. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we went, I, I, went, I, I went down to Miami and recruited a junior college player, 6'10", by name of Yvonne Joseph, who was a mechanical engineer major. <laughs> yeah, you, you, Coach, you, you could my, really speak the language. I mean, that's the one thing that immediately comes to mind, you breaking down the, with, with Joseph – a mechanical engineer that you're just breaking this down going, hey, son, listen, you can go play some basketball. We're going to win a bunch of games with you. I, I can see this happening right now. Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't get over. He was 6'10", and he was an engineer. But he turned out to be a, a wonderful young man and a very powerful player. Bobby, where – I mean, everybody points to the 85 ACC championship game when you beat Carolina for the third time. You did it in the Omni in Atlanta. I know what an experience that was for Georgia Tech people. But in your mind, is that where this turned, or did it turn before that? Because, I mean, you beat Carolina three times during the season, and they were the powerhouse team, and they had a great squad. But you were, you were contending before that. So did it, did it turn before that, or was that the, the pinpoint everybody refers to? That's the point everybody refers to. You know, you know, championships put you at a different level. And, you know, you can win during the regular season, but to, to win a championship, to win a regular season championship, to win a, a, an ACC tournament championship, to win regional championships, um, that's what puts you on the map. And that game, that game was the turning point. Bobby, I'm going to put you on the spot because you've got a great feel because you're right in the middle of the history of the league, especially in the 80s when it was unbelievable. As a head coach at Georgia Tech, what coach was the most difficult to prepare for? Ooh. Well, uh, you know, right off the bat, um, um, Mark, it had to be Dean Smith. Dean Smith, I always say this, when people ask me about the ACC, I say, of course, the godfather of the ACC, the guy who made the ACC was Everett Case. Uh, the, the coach who put the ACC on the map was my, my college coach at South Carolina. But in 1957, he won the first ACC national championship. 
Uh, the, the coach who set the bar in the ACC was Dean Smith. He took it to a, another level. And, of course, the guy who broke the bar is Coach K. Now, there's been a, a lot of great coaches in between. Norm Sloan won a championship. Jimmy Valdano won a championship. Uh, Terry Holland um, was a great coach. There's been s several coaches who have been great. Uh, but uh, I always define the ACC like that. And so in my era, the guy that we had to beat, the guy that Coach that Mike, Jimmy, and myself had to beat was Dean Smith. Uh, he made us better coaches. He made us better recruiters. He set the bar, and the bar was really high. And for us to be a champion, we had to go through Chapel Hill, and we had to go through Dean Smith. And, and, we, and eventually, the three of us, we did. Now, Coach K, like I said, um, he broke the bar. Bobby, it's hard to believe Mike has coached as long at Duke as he has. Um, in this era of success and to have that level of continuity, what is your impression of the ACC today? And do you see, I mean, I know you and Kay and Valvano thought you were young guns in those spring meetings at the Dunes Club in Myrtle Beach, okay? But do you, um, do you guys, do you see young guns now emerging as coaches in the ACC? Kevin Keats, Tony Bennett obviously has won a national championship. I think of Mike Young at Virginia Tech. Uh, but Lara Nega, I mean, we've got more coaches over the age of 70 now, Bobby, in the ACC than we've ever had in this conference's history. It's kind of amazing in that respect. It, re it really is. Um, of course, Leonard Hamilton's making the biggest move. But um, I think Georgia Tech has a chance next year. They have four starters back. Uh, they have the, Their backcourt is the most experienced backcourt in the ACC. And I think Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech they had a great year last year. Uh, they couldn't go to the tournament, which there was no tournament anyway. But uh, Leonard Hamilton mm -hmm. has made the biggest jump. Um, and um, it's going to be interesting to see once, once we come back to the real world what ACC basketball is going to be like. Can I say one thing before we let Coach go? And he may not even remember this. Sure. But, um, again, we're coming up on our one-year anniversary here in a couple of weeks. Bobby Crimmins grabbed me. Um, this is before we started this show. He said, hey, Mark, Mark, I got to talk to you about something. I said, what's that? <laughs> and, and Bobby said, hey, now, you and Wes, you and Wes are going to be doing this show. I said, yeah, yeah, we're going to be doing Packer and Durham. Yeah, 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 yeah. He goes, let me just tell you something. It's really important that you guys do this. I said, yeah, I know. We're, we're going to do a best. He goes, listen, listen to me now. Listen, Mark, listen. He goes, I'm just going to give you a piece of advice. I said, what's that, coach? He goes, don't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> don't hey, screw guys, it up. <laughs> hey, uh, Wes, I'm writing the book. I'm on chapter eight of my book. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Yeah. Yep. No, I, look, 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 look here. Look, real quick. Before we go to break, and I know we're running late here, do you have $10 in your pocket right now? <laughs> uh, yeah, I do because I have to play golf this afternoon, so I do have $10. <laughs> no, do you have it in your pocket right now? Um, no. I have to go get my wallet. I know I owe you $10. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, you owe everybody $10. Next time I see you, you I'll everybody pay you. $10. Uh, yeah, right. Sure. Uh, well, uh, best to Carolyn. Best to the grandkids and your children. Thanks as always. You look fantastic. I can't wait till you take my money again. Okay, Wes. Thank you very much for having me on. Take care, Mark. <laughs> Be good, Coach. Uh, take care. All right. The, gr the great Bobby Crimmins, ladies and gentlemen. Unbelievable. We were able to walk the technological high wire on this show. Uh, he and, uh, man, this has been fun today. Uh, I hope everybody's enjoyed it. Georgia Tech Takeover Day starts right after this show ends at uh, 10 o'clock. The commissioner of the ACC comes up at 930. Uh, I don't know where to start. You'll get the ACC baseball championship from six years ago. Danny Hall's team winning in Greensboro. Georgia Tech Clemson volleyball from last fall. Women's basketball from earlier this year. Nell Fortner in a great win. Georgia Tech's 2003 win over Carolina in basketball. Uh, Calvin Johnson and Reggie Ball win a season opener at Auburn in 2005. And then 9 o'clock tonight, Miami was headed to the BCS national title game. 
and Reggie Ball threw it on Calvin Johnson's shoe tops at the Orange Bowl on a Saturday night. They knocked Larry Coker in Miami out of the BCS national title chase. Chan Gailey got a huge win. That'll be the 9 o'clock takeover event. And when we come back, oh, my goodness, Roddy Jones, a man who took some hedge out of Athens in 2008, joins us on Packer and Durham.